If 2020 was defined by the global travel restrictions and the lockdowns that resulted in the losses for airlines, 2021 has been defined by airlines and the aviation industry mounting its recovery. However, it has not been a complete recovery as the numbers of air travelers taking to the skies is nowhere near to the pre-pandemic levels. This has been very much the theme of 2021 for the Asian aviation industry, which I'll review what has transpired over the year. As a note, this will be some of the biggest stories of 2021, though this will not be in any chronological order. With that said, 2021 got off to a tragic start with the crash of Surajaya Air SJ-182 in Indonesia. The flight operating with a Boeing 737-500 took off on January 9 from Jakarta bound for Pontianak, a domestic flight. After going off course, descending rapidly and having no distress call, wreckage from the airliner was found during the next few days off the shores of Jakarta. The tragedy of SJ-182 resulted in the loss of 62 lives. After initial investigations, the attention has been brought on to a possible malfunction in the auto throttle. Just a month after the crash of SJ-182, there was another incident involving a Boeing 777 over the skies over Denver, Colorado. It involved a United Airlines flight UA-328 from Denver to Honolulu operating with a Boeing 777-200. After takeoff from Denver, the aircraft experienced a catastrophic engine failure, though for this incident, the aircraft did return safely to the airport. The initial investigation would lead to scrutiny on the Pratt & Whitney 4000 engines found on older 777s, and some of these 777s were actually operating in Japan and South Korea. Following the incident, 777s in the United States, Japan, and Korea were grounded, and eventually, this would lead to Japan Airlines eventually retiring the aircraft. Following those two incidents, we saw the continuation of air travel restrictions into 2021. Though this year, we saw some efforts to reopen borders and easing travel restrictions. Some have failed, such as attempts to start a travel bubble between Singapore and Hong Kong due to differences in handling the COVID-19 situation while others such as Thailand implemented a sandbox scheme for the resort destination of Phuket, along with Singapore implementing its VTL scheme. However, these opening schemes and efforts are being threatened by the Omicron variant, a COVID-19 variant which has been spreading recently, and this has led to some countries such as Japan to close its borders during the end of this year. How things will transpire with the Omicron variant as we still learn about it, will be a major story for the start of 2022. As air travel restrictions continue to remain in place even for areas like in Southeast Asia, this has caused a strain on airlines' financial situations, some of which who have been struggling even before the pandemic. We saw some airlines such as those in Thailand continuing to seek assistance from their government, while others have turned to private sources. With financial struggles around, this has led to some airlines such as Philippine Airlines in their restructuring as they have filed for a Chapter 11 bankruptcy in the U.S. court. Meanwhile, some airlines such as Garuda Indonesia have reached a critical state. While the major business venture of a parent company of the likes of the h &A Group in China has led to more future uncertainty for its group airlines such as Hainan Airlines and Hong Kong Airlines. As airlines around the world and the aviation industry continues to mount their recoveries from the COVID-19 pandemic, it seems there has been a near-complete recovery for the Boeing 737 MAX following the groundings of the aircraft since 2019. After the US FAA lifted its grounding of the jets by the end of 2020, some countries such as those in Asia like Singapore, Malaysia, and India have since resumed the operations for the jets. However, there are some holdout countries that have yet to approve the aircraft for returning to the sky, such as in China, which is still putting some scrutiny onto the MAX. This has been a country where Boeing has been making much efforts for the return, as Boeing actually sent an aircraft for tests earlier this year. Things are reportedly moving in a positive direction, and we could see the return of the Boeing 737 MAX in the important aviation market of China in 2022. 
2021 is shaping up to be a return to normalcy for the aviation industry, and we could see this with the aircraft orders and deliveries during the year. A case in point for this could be seen in the recently held Dubai Air Show, where Airbus received landmark deals such as the order from Indigo Partners for our 255 A320 family aircraft, along with other headline orders it received this year. While Airbus received the most orders for commercial aircraft this year, Boeing received a new order for the 737 MAX from a new upstart airline in India, Akasa Air. Another part of the story has been the attention brought on to cargo aircraft. Boeing continued to enhance its offerings for their freighter aircraft, offering conversions for 737 and 767s. Though Airbus has made the biggest headline with the introduction of the Airbus A350 freighter, which within months of introduction has received orders from the likes of Singapore Airlines and Air France KLM. As the orders have picked up again, we saw some notable aircraft deliveries in the Asia Pacific, some of which are first for their airlines. Among these first is Vietjet, which primarily operates narrow-body A320, A321 aircraft. They recently received their very first wide-body aircraft, the A330. Meanwhile, Taiwan-based China Airlines received its first Airbus A321neo, which will be the future backbone of its regional operations. Finally, another major delivery was made to Cebu Pacific with the first Airbus A330neo for the Philippine-based budget airline. Even with air travel restrictions still in place, 2021 saw some historic firsts for airline routes. This year, we saw Vietnam Airlines becoming the first Vietnam flag carrier to launch regularly scheduled nonstop flights from Vietnam to the United States, while Japan-based budget airline Zip Air Tokyo became the first budget airline to offer flights between Asia and North America with its Tokyo to Los Angeles services. While there have been so much uncertainty in the aviation industry for the past two years, there is still some sense of optimism with some new airline startups being announced. Among them has been Akasa Air in India, which I earlier mentioned with its 737 MAX order. And we also learned of a new airline based in Alaska, which will offer connections between North America and Asia, Northern Pacific Airways. Meanwhile, airlines are adjusting their future plans, with the likes of the Korean Air and Asiana merger still getting approvals. The merger is expected now to be completed by 2024. The future will also see some elements of the past coming back as Air India will be returning to Tata Sons after Tata Sons the bid for the majority stake of Air India. This is all part of the drama that is the aviation industry, and the Asia-Pacific has been full of stories. With the good and the bad news, there also is a chance for conflict, and we are seeing a conflict between Qatar Airways and Airbus over the issues of surface degradation on the fuselage of Airbus A350s. This has been ongoing since the summer of this year, and things are heating up further as Qatar Airways is now seeking legal action against Airbus in the UK court. These are just some of the major headlines that have shaped the aviation industry in the Asia-Pacific, and to an extent, the global aviation industry. Looking back, what do you think is the biggest story of the aviation industry in 2021? And what do you expect to see in 2022? I'd definitely love to hear your take though. In the meantime, this has been Flights in Asia, highlighting the news and updates from the aviation and travel scene in the Asia Pacific. If you like this video, please like, comment, share, and subscribe. Thank you for watching and have a great day.